one big issue in South Africa in particular, I, I, I will have to say it, to the black community is access to funding. It's a reality. Blacks are the ones who are not having access to funding and finance. Private banks are unable to fund them. Even government, with the DFIs that we're having, they are highly regulated, as you said. Highly regulated, they make it difficult for a young person with a business uh, that makes beggars and everything to get funding because he must have all these things that are needed. In fact, that you'll ask from big conglomerates, you ask those for those things from these SMMEs. From the smallest of the businesses, we expect them to have everything. But let me tell you something, because I think it's important that we inform you as well. Recently, we had a meeting uh, with the, the president and all other ministers. We are going to see a huge reforms when it comes to um, the regulations of uh, funding by the state in the country. We are coming up with a policy which I'm not going to be in detail about, but we, exactly what we are talking about. How are we going to make sure that we change the situation where over the past 30 years, there's been money that has been there, there's been money that has been available, but the, the ones who need this money most are the ones who can't access it. So we have said we need to change it. Even when it comes to the issues of collateral, it becomes very problematic in South Africa if you don't have collateral to get funding. And we are getting to that exactly that. How do we then make it possible for our people, whom we know they don't even have that collateral, then let's make them, uh, uh, you know, to have access to the funding. So we are coming up with a very uh, serious, we are coming with serious reforms in reforming that part. Unemployment is not only about coming from the university or any higher education uh, sector, and then you get your degree or diploma or whatever qualification, and then we say, no, 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 he's got a qualification, but sitting at home, at home, he's unemployed. We must start talking about what are we doing to inculcate the, the culture of entrepreneurship in the country. There is no country that can survive without informal economy. There is no country that can survive without a massive number of entrepreneurs. If we don't have a culture of entrepreneurship in the country, then we are doomed. And we are very grateful and happy that you've got quite a number of young people who are involved in business. We've got quite a number of young people who are involved in business as employing more other people. That's when you need more funding to fund these small businesses so that we are able... To, in fact, it goes as far as growing our economy. If our informal economy and um, uh, 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 the, the small businesses in particular are not thriving, our economy will never grow. And without the growth in economy, believe you me, you will never arrest unemployment. There was an issue about um, our education system and what it produces. It's a reality. It's a reality. Uh, that, I must say again, in government we are looking at it, not just looking at it, at it. There is a way, in fact, some have been very extreme, saying, why do you continue having NSFAS that is going to fund someone who's going to do, I want to be di diplomatic. <laughs> I'm trying to be diplomatic as I can. I don't want to be quoted in a, out of context. Uh, but you know what I'm trying to say. Let me just say that. <laughs> you know, what, what I'm trying to avoid myself being reshuffled so early uh, because I've said... <laughs> Because I've said something that is wrong. That is on a lighter note. But all I'm, what I'm saying is that our education system, the big question is that um, some people are saying, why NSFAS? You've got about 45 billion rands that is always available every year to fund those who can um, you know, uh, go to universities or can afford to go to tertiary institutions. And then you fund people who are going to do qualifications that are not in demand. And we are dealing with issues of training, even the training that we provide to our people. The skills training, what kind of skills are we providing our people? What kind of training are we providing? We can talk about skills and skills development, um, training and everything, but what kind of training are we talking about? How does it change and shapes the life of a person? How does it shape the thinking? You are talking about critical thinking and how, how does it help? Are we going to continue giving out these trainings that are always being given out and leaving us where we have been all these years. But what I can tell you, there is going to be a greater change. There is going to be a greater change. Um, if uh, we don't change now, we will be failing the country. We, we are starting to focus. 
we are seeing the necessity of focusing and doing things that are going to help our young people. There are departments that are doing great um, a, a, a job. We are working together with DTIC um, in fun, with the, the small business, uh, the department that deals with small business, uh, Minister uh, Ndabeni uh, and Minister Tau. We are coming together to bring some programs that are I, th I believe they are more practical. And those programs were going to be taking out to young people in particular in terms of funding uh, their businesses, funding their programs that they are having because if we are unable to do that, we are not going to go anywhere. The programs by Harambi, the programs by the, 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 the presidency, those programs are really making a difference. They are making a difference. The issue of... Um, of, um, of um, there was an issue that was the work experience. It was raised here. The issue, I think President has spoken about it a number of times. I think we need to enforce it. In government, we've made it clear that entry-level positions, you don't need to ask for work experience. We have said it, it's a policy in government. We are no longer talking about it, just uh, mentioning it's a policy of government. But is it being enforced? Coming from labor, we have inspectors. I think maybe we must find ways now of inspecting whether these policies are. But the reality, we need to enforce it. Not only in government, even in private sector, because we are, we are one country. The issue of work experience, where are you going to get it if you are not employed? You need to start somewhere. And those are areas that we, the CV that was spoken about here, with one line of whatever, needs to have at least five, ten lines. And you can only do that when government works together with private sector, when the policies that we take are implemented. And that policy was made because we are cognizant of the realities where young people will apply for jobs they don't get to be employed because of experience. And you start to ask a question, where are they going to get this experience? Where are they going to buy it? They can't buy it anyway. So that's why we came with that uh, uh, policy, and it needs to be enforced. We're not saying it's the solution to unemployment. It's a fact. There is one who said un unemployment will never be solved by government alone. It can never. There is, no, there is no country, by the way, where government is the biggest employer. It's private sector, like momentum. What they are doing is very good. And I, I literally, I want to take this program, and then we take it in many other provinces. This program will come up with ideas that are practical, that are going to help us. There was an issue, again, that was raised about um, not only young people, South Africans, the majority of South Africans in general, they stay far from work. They stay far from where economic activities are. And that is one biggest challenge. He was talking about uh, somebody who got the job somewhere and has to leave the township, has to find a place to stay. We, we are spending money. We are spending money. The money that you don't have. We were talking about, you know, there is quite a number of things that were, were, were raised here regarding that, that, that issue. And I think it dates back, I have to say it, and I'm not sorry about it, our special planning, which we know it's still influenced by the apartheid system, and we are not going to change it in one day. Black people were pushed far away from economic activities. That's why you'll stay in townships that are very far. You are not closer to any economic activities. But what are we doing now to change those? What are we doing now to change those? What are we doing as government to make sure that people who come to seek for work opportunities in the cities. We've got quite a number of uh, human settlements areas within every city or town. It's such things that we must start talking about. Another biggest challenge which I think as the country, if we don't deal with, it will come back to us and bite us. And it's a ticking time bomb. It's um, the youth that is not employed and unemployable. We, it's a need, we've got a need program that we are dealing with, an NEET program. But that is the ticking time bomb. They are not employed. They are not employable. What is going to happen? What needs to be done? I think such sessions can, yes, we do have programs that are directed to such um, challenges. But I think such um, gatherings, uh, Buddha, 
I think it's such things that as public, private uh, partners, we must start dealing with. What needs to be done? They can't go back to school. We are talking about someone who's 32, 33. Let alone that he will be 35 and go. But you still have that person even if he's 36 or 38. He's still in the country. He's still a problem in the country. He's still a problem in himself because he can't provide for himself. So what needs to be done? That's when we need to sit down and say, these are the things that we believe can help our people. These are the things that we believe can make a change. Because some of the things that you are proposing, yes, they work. But are they working fast enough? Are they practical enough? Do, they do we change the situation of that particular individual if we say we are going to train you? And then after training, what happens? Do they get employed? It's a big question that needs all of us.